Get it. Kerry here from Homestead How and the Carnivore Diet Movie, along with my good friends, Adam from Carnivore Today and Alia Wells. How's it going, guys? Great. Fantastic. Adam and I are freshly back from Canada. Yeah. Literally, yeah. Adam, you just got back because you had a much longer drive than me. I had about a three-hour drive from the airport. What What was your drive? It was. Uh, it took me about six hours, but it should have only took took uh, four and a half hours. I had to stop for wipers and put air in a tire, <laughs> all kinds of stuff in Chicago. It was crazy. But what time I'm did you back. get in? Uh, Two thirty-five. Oh wow! Yeah. And you're up and ready to go doing a live stream the next day. Yeah, that's power of the ribeye. That's awesome. <laughs> well, hey, there's a bunch of people jumping on. Um, Ali is here too. We got some announcements and. Uh, we're chatting with Maggie right here, and she's willing to answer any questions you guys have. Um, she wasn't quite comfortable to jump on. She she did one live stream with Dr. Chafee, uh, but her internet is also kind of spotty. Uh, Adam and I learned that while we're out there, so it, it can be tough to have a good, solid stream. But any questions you have for Maggie, who is a carnivore, she's 82. She's been a carnivore for over 60 years. Besides all of that, though, she's just an amazing person uh she's a beef farmer and she said hey if they even have questions about uh cows she loves cows anything about cows uh <laughs> cows or horses or anything related to the farm leave it in the sidebar so please post some questions uh i think maggie will really like to answer some of those she'll answer on here and then we'll we'll answer on her behalf and uh once she gets a little bit more comfortable hopefully we'll do a live stream together uh with her so the purpose of this was to provide an update, uh, chat with chat about our Adam and my trip out to visit with Maggie and filming and everything that happened. And it's, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> it's crazy. We, Adam, when did we go out there? <laughs> uh, Saturday, I believe. Sa it's yep. Saturday. So yep. we were there from Saturday until Thursday. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Oh, cool. We got some questions in the sidebar. I appreciate that, Lisa. See, we'll, we'll start hitting some of those up. Um, just okay. do a QQQ like that. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll let a few, we'll let a few build up and then we'll, we'll, we'll shoot some of those out because there's a lot of people jumping on. We already have 105 people on here. Wow. All right. Before awesome. I cool. jump in and we share some of our adventures uh, that we had, huge shout out to Maggie and Mac for hosting us. Yes. Two incredible people. Uh, it was, it was beyond amazing. And I have links in the description below. Maggie and Mac have an awesome Instagram page. So go follow them and give them some love over there. They also have a um, fundraiser that Dr. Chafee kindly set up that quite literally helped them save the farm that's been in the family for 98 years and was almost lost. Uh, Dr. Chafee is just absolutely amazing. And the whole carnivore community, they got back to them. We'll talk about that a little bit more and what we saw there. We did a video with uh, Maggie and Mac to, to do a thank you on that. That was pretty awesome. Uh, and then we also have Maggie's website for uh, the meat. Um, so that is all linked to in the description below. So, so go check it out. So yeah, Adam and I, we flew in on Saturday. And I guess one of the cool things from my perspective was Adam's an awesome guy. Everyone knows that. We, so uh, scary. <laughs> Adam reached out to me. I don't remember when this happened to Adam, when I came up with this idea that I want to do a carnivore diet documentary. It was a long time ago, wasn't it? Cause I've only been yeah. carnivore for six months now. It was, <laughs> it was pretty soon in the beginning. I was just like, Oh, let's just do a documentary now. And Adam emailed me and said, whatever I got to do, I want to help. And he's been uh, by my side this entire time. And he's been helping with everything. Like we wouldn't be where we are without Adam, but I never met him in person. So it was really cool. We both, he drove a much further to Chicago O'Hare Airport. I drove three hours and we met for the first time in person. And that is in a YouTube video. Did I make that video live, Adam? I don't even remember now. <laughs> no, I don't remember. That is in a YouTube video on my channel and it's going to go live soon. But check out Adam's channel, Carnivore Today, and his Instagram because he's been posting some pictures uh, from, the, from the journey. But I have a video just the the first day and the flight over and leaving the girls in the homestead and meeting adam for the first time of course we got that on video uh it was pretty awesome yeah <laughs> were you guys i was crying? waiting at the bus stop we met at the bus we, stop i don't think we cried no i don't think there were we, tears there we didn't cry i cried later that night yeah Aww. <laughs> we cried ourselves to sleep <laughs> yeah so the the flight was awesome oh a fun, a little fun adventure. Um, I'll get to the point and go quicker here. 
but there's still people jumping on. We're just five minutes into this. So I, I always li- like to let a few people jump on before we jump into the questions. But we uh, we ate McDonald's at the airport. That was the first time I had McDonald's on Carnivore, believe it or not. We followed Dr. Barry. Right, Adam? He did that video? Yep, yep. So, yep. Off the, off the quarter pounders, off the a la carte menu. Did the old a la It was great. It was yeah. just straight up beef. There's nothing really added to it. I don't know what I was thinking with it, but... Uh, that's what we ate. And then we got on the plane and we arrived. And I guess the only unfortunate thing, Maggie and Mac were so kind about it. Uh, we got there so late. The plane was delayed a little bit and it was my planning. It was just like, it was an hour drive from the airport and getting the rental car. But, uh, Maggie and Mac met us there in the Gator, which we, we learned to love over the week. Uh, the Gator is this this little four wheel drive vehicle. They have two of them. So we, Adam and I were cruising around on those all week and that was a lot of fun. Uh, but they, they met us and they, they brought us in and they showed us our cabin. There's, um, they have a couple of guest cabins on the property. Dr. Chafee and L stayed in one not too long before uh, we were there. And it was really cool. It was just a heated, cozy little cabin with a refrigerator. And this is where Maggie got us is she had us stocked up in the fridge. The fridge was stocked. And one of the things in the fridge was um, beef jerky. And it oh, was yeah. fantastic. Delicious. I, I think, Adam, I think that was intended for like the week. <laughs> uh, it was and for, five minutes. <laughs> for normal people, it would have easily lasted a week because they gave us a generous uh, amount of beef jerky. But I think we downed that thing in the first or second day for sure. <laughs> it was gone. I was yeah. like, Adam, there's this one piece left. And I just ate it. It was, yeah. it was so good. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah that, that was great. Then Megan Mac let us go to sleep. And then the second day, uh, we got up and well, here, I'll let Adam talk about it a little bit. Second day, Adam memories. What if do you I got? Can remember the second day, uh, <laughs> let's see, we got up, we had breakfast. Uh, Maggie made a uh, tremendous breakfast, uh, delicious food. Some of the most delicious food I've ever had. And one new thing that, uh, Carrie and I both had that we never had was, uh, beef trimmings, fat trimmings, uh, cut into chunks and then fried. Uh, so that was that was delicious. <laughs> it was it was better than more appetizing than I thought it was going to be. And it was very uh, filling as far as energy for the rest of the day. So we had breakfast and that, that was some good stuff. Uh, what what was your favorite part of breakfast, Gary? The same thing. Yeah, the beef and filming it, too, was fun. So this entire time, Adam and I were filming or photographing and I had the, the gimbal with the Netflix camera and it like my right arm is so much stronger now. It was just the whole time holding it. But I got some really cool footage of Maggie cutting the, the fat up. Uh, and, but yeah, that was my favorite part. I had done a little bit of that here or there. But after the week, this was one of my big takeaways from the trip. I need to be doing that every day because I have not been getting enough fat. I felt amazing. I'm energized after eating that that fat and it's it's all common sense stuff and i don't know why we kind of steer away from it but like dr kilt says it should be called fativore not carnivore and i i Mm -hmm. I, that was one of my favorite parts the breakfast in particular was awesome every single day it's such a simple thing but i'm I'm being carnivore for six months at home not my whole family is doing it and i end up cooking for myself or cooking for the family i rarely get to sit down and not have to cook didn't have to cook all week so that was pretty that was pretty awesome yeah that, that was, was delicious it. and dr chafee even messaged during the trip and he was like yeah man aren't those breakfasts the best he's like he's he's already <laughs> reminiscing about them and missing them so uh that was really cool and then that's that first day mac took us on a tour of the entire farm which was really eye-opening like there's so much stuff there's so much there it's, it's, it's such a big property but so much to learn uh, mm-hmm. I don't think I ever learned so much or gleaned so much wisdom uh, than, than this trip, for sure, from both Maggie and Mac throughout the trip. But yeah, and then I guess after that, we we helped uh, Maggie and Mac put up a fence. Yeah, That was a project, yep. and that was really cool to see. And for me, it was like, yeah, let's go. Let's do this thing. We got we, It's going gonna, it's gonna to be good footage for the documentary. This is what it's like working on a farm or a homestead. There's always fencing to be done on a farm or a homestead. So, but this was a big project, right, Adam? Absolutely. And, and Maggie, please correct us if we're wrong. If it's if it's not called a fence, I, I don't know. Maybe it's called a corral or something. I don't know. Uh, but we also installed uh, feeder panels uh, along that fencing and uh, to allow the the cows to come walk up and stick their head through, and then they'll be able to easily feed 
feed the cows along this road. Uh, yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot of work. <laughs> and uh, man, we were put through the paces. And I'm gonna tell you what, right now, she was she was working circles around us. <laughs> <laughs> she put us to shame. Yeah. Awesome. That was one of the most eye opening things because. At 82, at, I know Maggie's watching this right now. So if you guys have questions, post it. Uh, I, I would say this to Maggie there, and she just wouldn't believe me. She's like, why is this so unusual? Everyone should be doing this. But mm -hmm. most 82-year-olds, most 62-year-olds aren't doing the work that Maggie's doing. It was incredible. Like, she's lifting these fence panels by herself. I'm just like, what? I'm having trouble lifting them. <laughs> and just working nonstop the whole day, climbing over uh, the fences. She taught Adam and I how to properly climb over the fence because I was I was messing that up. Uh, at one point, Maggie was carrying four full five-gallon buckets of grain filled to the top, two in each hand. It was incredible. <laughs> That's incredible. For Maggie, though, she's like, this, this isn't incredible. This is just this should just be what's happening. But the average 82-year-old is not doing some of these things. So uh, we got all of this, of course, uh, on video, and a lot of it's going to be in the documentary. And so I've been getting a lot of questions. We want to see more. We want to see more. I want to share more, but it's going to take a long time to go through all of the footage. And as you guys know, whatever we show on YouTube, I cannot show in the documentary. And the documentary is the goal. The goal of documentary is to reach millions of people and people that are hopeless out there. And they can get so much hope from Maggie's example mm -hmm. because it's mm -hmm. incredible. It's just just incredible i can't i can't i've been going through the footage more and more i just can't wait to share more not just the footage but the story and maggie's words besides the carnivore stuff and everything else uh the wisdom that she shared so uh it was an incredible week i'm not going to share every detail from every single day i do have some videos that we're going to release but just a fair warning these aren't you guys are going to watch these videos and be like why is this like the quality and stuff these the video that I'm sharing is like behind the scenes stuff that we can share that we know isn't going to go in the dock. All of the good stuff's going in the dock. Yeah. So we'll we'll have some more videos with that. I see a lot of questions coming through, so we'll take some of those questions. But one other thing I wanted to say before we ask some questions, you can ask questions for me, Adam uh, or Maggie. Um, I'm chatting with Maggie as we speak, so she will answer them for you. Uh, Maggie said, cows don't care what you call it, Adam. The fence. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Very true. I love that. It, basically, what it was was to streamline the feeding process to make it easier and safer to feed the cows so they could come stick their heads through and you didn't have to go in there. Um, but we were talking about there were some big steel beep, uh, posts uh, that were putting in there. So we were digging holes and Adam and I were just going for it. And uh, Mac, too, just working nonstop oh, yeah. the whole time, had the whole thing planned out. Hey, quick shout out to my friend, Mr. Bill Knott is on. Thank Bill, you know. uh, Maggie says hello. I was telling Maggie, Maggie and I were talking about Bill. Maggie and I were talking about everything throughout the trip, but um, she's a big fan of yours, Bill, for sure. You're an inspiration oh, yeah. to so many people. Uh, one thing I want to say real quick, and then we'll jump into some of the questions and I'll stop chatting so much. Uh, one of Maggie's biggest things that I totally agree with was this carnivore thing, eating the proper human diet is so important for so many people without saying it's the purpose mm -hmm. of this documentary, but where is everyone going to get this food and this meat to eat if everyone eats this way? That was one of Maggie's biggest messages, and I totally agree with her. Um, we have to support and raise the voices and elevate the voices of small-town local farmers. I did a huge video series, two videos with my neighbor who works for pennies. Oftentimes, he's paying to be a farmer. He works a full-time job at a factory, and he's making nothing raising cows because he's so passionate about it. He's a sixth generation farmer. Maggie shared that passion exactly the same. And it, it's like they're, they're, they're paying to do this work. They're not even being respected to do the work when their voices should be elevated. And after I did the videos with my neighbor, I'm like, what next generation is going to take up this responsibility and continue this tradition of farming locally? Maggie is amazing with her cows. She loves her cows. She's a good steward of the cows and the land. And so is my other neighbor. And so are most people that are running independent, locally run uh, farms. We have to elevate these voices. You have to support these farmers. So everyone watching this, I encourage you, stop getting your meat from the grocery store and go meet your local farmer. And this is the other thing I really want to encourage people to do. There are so many people watching this video right now that have started their own YouTube channel. A lot of them because I told them to, which is kind of <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. Here's Absolutely. the best video you can do. Go meet your local farmer and say, can I do a video <laughs> with you? I'll put it on YouTube. 
It's free promotion for you. And then people can learn about what you're doing and how important it is. If any one of you does that, reach out to me, homesteadhow.gmail.com. I will promote the heck out of that video. We have to elevate the voices of these local small town farmers. They're all over the world. And mm -hmm. I, I said this to people too. Everyone's like, well, that's easy for you, Carrie, because you have one down the road. Well, if I lived in Milwaukee or Madison or any of these major cities, I would have to drive an hour to come out here. I would do that in a heartbeat versus going to the grocery store. The meat that I buy from my neighbor's frozen. I'd take a big cooler and I'd stock up and it would be cheaper than going to the grocery store. I know where the meat's coming from. And it's just a way better product and you're support, supporting a local farmer. So support local is my big message. I'll stop rambling now. I know we have a bunch of questions and we got Alia Wells here who's awesome. Check out her YouTube channel too. And Alia <laughs> has a little announcement. I think she was going to make some exciting news and then she's going to- Am I going to make it? Show. Well, sure. Go ahead. You are. You're Yay! <laughs> okay. I, I should have prepared a little bit. Um, okay. So on the 11th, of November, is that what we're talking about? 11-11. 11-11. Carrie has booked a haul and from five to seven in the, at Sheridan in Rosemont, Illinois. Y'all are welcome. Uh, we are going to do a meet and greet. <laughs> Am I saying the surprise guest? Yes. Dr. Tony Hampton will be there. Uh, we are asking for a $50 donation and it's gonna go to the carnivore diet documentary. Uh, to come to the meet and greet, there will be water and that's about it <laughs> and lovely company. I'm going to be there. I'm literally flying there just for this, but I do have family in Chicago, so I'll be seeing them also. Uh, yes. Adam's going to be there. Yep. Everyone can meet uh, Carrie. That's that's the, yep. that's what everyone really this wants. Guy. They do want to meet Carrie. <laughs> I'm going to be there. Yep. Dr. Hampton's going to be there. Adam's going to be there and we're, we're, we're not announcing it yet, but we're inviting a lot of other carnivore YouTubers. So, but it's first come first serve. So if we announce, oh, so-and-so is coming, it might fill up quickly. We don't know. Uh, but do be aware that there's going to be other people coming too. Uh, mm -hmm. Emma might come with me too. I'm trying to convince Emma, fine. carnivore Emma to come uh -oh. with me too. That would be pretty awesome. So and she can meet carnivore Jacob and carnivore Brianna. My kids are going to be with me. <laughs> nice. So. Bunch of carnivore kids. That's going to be fun. <laughs> So it's just a meet and greet. It's not like a big conference or anything like that. But um, Adam and I are going to be there filming during the day. We're actually going to have a little studio set up in the banquet hall area. And so you could get an opportunity to potentially get on film, either for YouTube or possibly even the documentary. So there's no guarantee of that, but we're going to be walking around and we're always holding cameras and YouTubing and filming stuff. And <laughs> if you have a compelling, interesting story and we can document it quickly, we're going to try to do that. And we might do some of that during the day as well, but none of that, uh, none of that's for sure. But Alia posted the link on the side. It's carnivoredietmovie.com. Yeah, I'm putting uh, it, I'm trying to put everybody's thing everybody's because i don't know if that made it to all destinations so i'm i'm on my laptop right now trying oh to got it also. alia alia yeah yeah is it is it unlimited guests no it's not that's why you got to sign up right now there's only 50 guests 50 seats 50 seats for 50 dollars. hope to see you there yeah and it's, <laughs> it's rsvp so adam who just drove all night literally set this up during the day the form and everything's on the website you can go on and you can register and you can pay which means you will be locked in before it fills up. So um, we got some time. So I am, I think it might fill up, fill up because we've, it's Chicago and there's a lot of carnivores out there. There is. Uh, they just did but a we'll see. I, I know $50 channel. is a lot of money, but every single penny of that $50 is going straight towards the documentary. We're yep. not taking any of that. Um, so that it's, it's kind of like a donation deal versus your, yep. you know, so that's the, that's the reason for that. And Dr. Hampton is definitely going to be there. And then afterwards, that's from, five to seven, right? Yeah. Five, yeah, to, five seven. to seven. Yeah. So let's make this next point clear. Yes. <laughs> so basically the $50 is a donation for the carnivore diet documentary. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. The reason this is happening at all is because of you guys that got to fly to Canada because of all the donations. So the $50 donation and that's for five to seven only lock in your spot. Now Carrie is going to mention the next thing because that has nothing to do with the $50 you're paying right now. <laughs> yes. So completely separate from that and <laughs> optional. Uh, we're hoping to go out and get a steak at a steak restaurant. Um, Adam, myself, uh, Ali, are you? Uh, no, I can't. I think it's going to be really rough because I'm going to have my kids and my uncle oh, right, driving right. me home that night. So I, I, won't, I will be there for five to seven for sure. Okay. Absolutely. I'll be there from five to seven. Afterwards, we're going to go get some steaks and Dr. Hampton's going to join us. 
uh, as well. And we're gonna we're gonna talk more about that and share an invite. We're trying to figure out how many people are interested in doing that and uh, find a place that can accommodate on a Saturday night around seven o'clock. So no guarantees there, but that. we're definitely going to be eating steak afterwards and try to invite as many people as we can fit in on a Saturday night in Chicago. So <laughs> Mike, Mike, Primal Mike, uh, we've been chatting and he's going to help find a, a place in Rosemont. There's like a Brazilian steak restaurant or something like that in other places. He, he offered and started doing some research. Ah, oh, very cool. cool. Thanks, Thanks Mike. Mike. <laughs> so 11, 11, someone asked in the comments, it's November 11th is the date and it's from five to 7 PM central standard time, Chicago time, uh, that night on Saturday. So, uh, more to come on that, but if you're interested and you want to do it, carnivore forward slash Chicago. I'm just, uh, I'm tossing it and everybody's directly into their YouTube chat. Yeah, there I don't know go. if we should make this next announcement because it isn't officially booked, but what the heck? Let's do another announcement real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Adam's like, no, 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 wait, like, what are you doing? What's going on? <laughs> Adam doesn't know. Uh, well, after this, uh, everyone's wondering, like, what are you guys doing next? What are you doing to film? Well, uh, we've got some plans. We're going to share some more of that. But one thing we're definitely doing, we're filming the day of in Chicago. That's one of the reasons we're there. Um, and then after that, I'm heading to Canada again to film my good friend, um, Jeffrey DeProsperous, who has stage four cancer. We're going to be filming him uh, for the documentary uh, immediately after. Chicago is right on the way. <laughs> it's just another many, many hours up and towards Canada. So oh my um, gosh. I got to talk to Adam a little bit more about that and mm -hmm. schedule some things out and see how that works. But it uh, looks like that's definitely going to be happening next a lot of people have been asking what's what's next what's next that's that's what's next so uh and we've got some other things too yet to yet to be announced so those are some big announcements maybe i'll leave it at that it looks like we got a bunch of questions already which is really cool so, i've been starring them so you can go to the starred category thank you ollie that's awesome there's 258 people on here again real quick uh, uh, if you have any questions for maggie i'm chatting with her on my phone right now questions about carnivore Maggie, just real quick, if you're new, Maggie is 82 years young. She's a carnivore. Uh, she looks like she's half her age. She does the work of someone a third of her age. And <laughs> she's awesome, but she's also a beef farmer, and she knows everything you can imagine about cows and horses and working dogs on a farm. So any questions for Maggie, post in the side right now with the QQQ. I will ask them, and we will relay them. And in the future, we might get Maggie on here uh, to do the actual live stream with us. Yep. So, hit the like, hit the like button for Maggie. 260 likes. Yes. Let's do it. And learn more about Maggie. I linked to her Instagram. You got everyone here has got to go follow Maggie on Instagram. She also has a YouTube channel. She hasn't posted anything to it yet. Um, and she also has a website, which is linked to. And then the last thing is, um, I mentioned this briefly earlier, so I'll start with this and then we'll go into the questions. Uh, she has a fundraiser, Dr. Chafee, set up. They almost lost their farm. There was a drought. There was all sorts of issues just stacking up. 90, was it 99 years? Almost 100 years this farm has been running and in the family. Uh, and they almost, it was, it was so close to being shut down. Dr. Chafee put together a fundraiser. And when Adam and I were there, we got to see the results of that fundraiser from Dr. Chafee and the amazing carnivore community in a gigantic, huge stack of um, straw that they were able to purchase with those funds from yeah. all of you that donated. And it was enough to not have to close down the farm and keep things going. Uh, but there's still a lot more expenses and winter's coming up. So the fundraiser is still open and there's a link for it in the description below. Uh, I've donated to it twice myself. So I'm, I'm practicing what I'm preaching here. I'm not just telling you guys to go do it. So if you're interested in supporting uh, Maggie, please check that out. And huge shout out and thank you to Dr. Chafee such an awesome guy for setting that up for him. Like, literal, uh, Ma Max said it when I was there. I said, uh, it's amazing what's happening here. He said, it's, it's life-changing for them. It's literally life-changing. They would have lost the farm without it. So check those links out in the description below. And uh, yeah, let's take some questions here. Here's a question. This is a good one for Maggie. Uh, question, at what age do you butcher beef? Question for Maggie. So um, let me see here. Oh, I just closed this down. I will... We're going to have to give Maggie a minute because she's got to type this in here. But that's a question for Maggie. And I don't know, Adam, you want to say anything while we wait for <laughs> Maggie to type? Or should we move on to the next one and then maybe jump around a little bit? Um, I think all the questions are for Maggie. 
Yeah, buy some. But I wanted to say something in regards to that fence. So uh, the the posts that we put in initially, they're freaking massive. They're I don't even know how much these things weigh. 250, 300 pounds, something like that. And they're like uh, 10 feet long, maybe longer. And uh, Mac and I were lifting the ends of these things up to get them slid down into the hole. And it took just about everything to get of my strength <laughs> to get this in. Mac was probably lifting more than I was. <laughs> but uh, so in order to get it out of the hole so we can move it, we had to move one of them. Uh, Maggie had to go get a chain and this big old tractor with a big giant bucket on it just to even lift this thing up out of the hole. Uh, I mean, it was so incredibly heavy, but we were able to move that post and, and, uh, get, get everything set up properly. But yeah, it's just the amount of work that, that Maggie and Mac do is, is absolutely insane for, you know, what the rest of the world would deem somebody that should be in an old folks home. And, uh, you know, they consider themselves middle-aged, which is absolutely incredible. I love yeah. that. The, the other thing with the tractor that was really impressive was Maggie's an expert on that thing. Like she was picking up fence panels with these little grabbers and just moving them around. But the really cool thing was uh, Maggie's granddaughter came for a visit and uh, Maggie was teaching her how to drive. The, she already knows how to drive the tractor. She was letting her drive the tractor again after already teaching the granddaughter how to drive it so for part of the trip maggie and her her young granddaughter were in the tractor and then for another part of it i was in maggie invited me in the tractor too which was pretty cool <laughs> i'm in there trying to film with the camera in the corner i got some actually some really good shots from that surprisingly because i couldn't see the viewfinder it was it was kind of tight but um that was pretty awesome oh uh, maggie's answering some of the questions right now and she said one of them uh shout out bill not um this is what maggie said to bill Bill, you are freaking amazing. Carrie and Adam will bring you here as soon as you can make it. Right, Aww. Carrie and Adam? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we'd love to meet you, Bill, in person. So, Bill, you have another fan. Maggie and oh, I, I were talking about you quite a bit uh, up there in Canada. So that's pretty cool. Um, so I think Maggie is typing right now. So maybe we'll move on to the next question. Uh, Jennifer, Texas Carnivore. We're going to jump around a little bit because it's going to take a while to answer some of these uh, Maggie, when will you have your you, your channel ready on YouTube? While Maggie's typing, I will try to answer that the best I can. She's pretty darn close. So was this yesterday? Were we, were we there yesterday, Adam? Uh, in the yeah. morning. We left in the morning. <laughs> yeah. We Okay. We left in the morning. It was late uh, the night before. The we day before yesterday, that. I was showing Maggie how to, how easy it is to do YouTube. And then I realized her showing me on the phone, she was already recording so many videos that would be perfect for YouTube. Like just her day-to-day -day activities and stuff out in the, um, by the cows. So I'm like, Maggie, you can just upload those. You already got it. So I don't think it's going to be very long, uh, Jennifer, Texas Carnivore, uh, before we start seeing them. And I was telling Maggie too, do some shorts as well. She already, she has a whole library of shorts. She'll, she'll do a video and she'll send it to Mac or to, um, to some of her kids. So she's got a lot of that already. So I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think it'll be too long. Uh, oh, here we go. Dennis, comment on Alberta beef. $10. Thank you so much, Dennis. Every penny from that goes right to the carnivore diet documentary. Adam, I'm going to grab a water from behind me. Do you have any comments on Alberta beef? Uh, we ate almost entirely at Maggie's house, but uh, two times we did have to leave to go upload stuff in town on the internet, faster internet. And we did stop and we had to we had to, we had to, we we're, we had to try it. We had to go and get a steak <laughs> at a steak place and, and spoil ourselves one time. So, yes. Yeah. We both got, both got obviously a ribeye because that's, uh, that's Carrie's baby. Mm -hmm. uh, he can't, he can't go hardly 24 hours without the ribeye. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> we got some delicious uh, Alberta beef. And uh, yeah, that's, it's definitely some of the best, best in the world for sure. Yeah. I, I, I've heard of Alberta beef, but before going there, I heard from so many people like that's the best stuff. That's the greatest stuff. It's the best. It was fantastic. I say that about every steak I've ever eaten my entire life, but I don't know. Everyone, every bite is a celebration. Every bite of that steak was a celebration. So, um, yeah, it was really good. Let's see here. Okay, here we go. Maggie answered the previous question. I'm going to jump up to that one. At what age do you butcher beef? Here's Maggie's answer. She said, no beef is ever wasted, but we butcher at two to three years of age minimum. Old cows and old bulls, when their time on the ranch is done, they're actually 
some of the best beef you will ever taste. Uh, you just need to know how to cook it. Uh, Mac and I can show you how. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. And I believe uh, for breakfast, we had uh, ground beef, which was one of uh, the their uh, friends, the cow that they befriended. Uh, I believe his name was Reserve, a bull. And uh, yeah, we, we had that and it was it was delicious. I hate to say that because, you know, it was kind of like a, a, a friend, a family friend. But uh, it, it was it was really, really good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm missing those breakfasts for sure. I'm going to try to recreate those at home. Oh, uh, here's a good question. Maggie, here's another one for you. I like this question too because, uh, Maggie, I think I mentioned this, but I've been doing homesteading for years. And so a lot of people that follow my channel are homesteaders, meaning they have a small, they're, they're a wannabe Maggie. That's what I consider myself. I'm a wannabe <laughs> Maggie. I've got a small farm. I got a couple chickens. Uh, I've got a couple goats. I don't have any pork. I don't have any cows yet. I want to know how, but I don't know how to do it. A lot mm -hmm. of people watching are in the same place. True Story is asking, beef cows, do they need company or can you just keep one? That's a great right. question. I wonder that for myself. So Maggie, mm -hmm. it, a small homestead like mine, I got 20 acres. I do have grass, but I would need fenced in area for it. But could I get away with just one cow or do I need many? So Well, well Maggie... I would say if you wanted to have babies, you'd probably have to have more than one. But that's yes. just me. <laughs> Good, good point. Good point. <laughs> for sure. Or a cow and a bull. Right. You need at least yes. two. Right. <laughs> right. One male, one female. <laughs> so uh, I'll give Maggie some time to answer that. Uh, and we'll take another question here. We'll just jump around a little bit. Um, here we go. Question. What is Maggie's favorite breed of beef cattle? Favorite breed. Interesting. So we'll, we'll give her some time to answer that one. Uh, while we do that, let me see here real quick. Adam took some incredible photos uh, while we were while we were there, like next level stuff. So um, I think you posted a little bit, one or two here or there, uh, but we'll we'll be we'll be sharing some more of those uh, coming up. But. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Adam, while we're waiting, while we're waiting for the answer, I had a question for you. Yes. What was one memorable moment from the week we were there that really stood out for you besides the breakfast? One memorable moment was our, uh, my girl, Tessa, coming to visit early in the morning where she came to the door and was uh, whimpering at the door and wanted, wanted to be let in and come in and see us. So yeah, it's an adorable little dog, Tessa. And uh yeah, I just I fell in love with her and she she hardly would leave my side. <laughs> so that was yeah. definitely memorable. Until she met me and then she liked me more. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> right. no, she was the cutest, she was the cutest dog. She was absolutely in love with Adam and she'd come by in the mornings to greet us every day. She was freaked out at me because she'd come up to me and she's so cute. Uh, but then I'd aim the camera at her and she, she thought it was a gun or something. And she would just power and run away from the camera. So, Hey, Adam, I, do you I mind if just, I show him your like Tessa you. picture? No, go ahead. Aww. All right. You guys got to see this really cute dog, but also just next level photo by, by Adam. Here we go. Boom. Aww. Yep. There's Tessa. There's Tessa. She's looking for a belly rub. <laughs> yeah yeah that, i love that picture too the little yellow on the ground is pretty cool mm -hmm. yeah the the dogs were definitely memorable for sure here i got one carrie the, here this this is uh we're switching gears okay um let's see share screen and window so at this point, um, you know, we're we're in the middle of uploading a bunch of photos and videos and all kinds of stuff, right? We had to go go to town to hook up to some internet. And we, we got to a point where Carrie had to make a decision. You know, it was either go this way or go this way. And you 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 decide which which one he chose. <laughs> <laughs> So he's got his nice. choice between the Fire and Flower Cannabis Company <laughs> and, 
And Tim Hortons, which is conveniently located right next to the cannabis company. Really? I wonder why. Really? And uh, yeah, you see which one he's pointing at. That was fun. <laughs> Adam and I had a lot of fun throughout the week. Uh, hopefully we didn't scare too many people. I think there was another moment where Adam took a picture of me eating a gigantic piece of bread. <laughs> You'd yeah. never see me doing it in a million years, but I think it threw some people off. That was pretty fun. I think I got some pictures of Adam here too. I could share as well. Uh Oh, uh Oh, <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So we're, we're going to just jump around a little bit here. Cause it's going to take Maggie a while to type in all these answers. So the last question for Maggie was what is Maggie's uh, favorite uh, breed of cattle? Um, here we go. Let's see. I had some more questions here. In terms of um, in terms of filming stuff, Adam, for several mm -hmm. days, yep. uh, what, what was sort of your expectations versus what happened versus any kind of craziness that was memorable and worth mentioning? Well, my expectations before going there was that everything was going to be planned out and nice and tidy and <laughs> um, that there wasn't really going to be any work going on and, you know, they were going to kind of adhere to what we needed, <laughs> but uh, Hey, it's, it's a working ranch and uh, these guys are doing, you know, big, big business. They're, they're doing, uh, doing their thing. And, you know, we kind of had to fit into that, uh, that, that, layer of work if you will and uh we actually became <laughs> became part of the work which was a lot of fun but uh definitely it was it was not not expected for me uh, i knew ahead of time to bring some boots and we, i was asked if i could swing a hammer and of course i can but i didn't really know what that entailed so uh i i probably would have been <laughs> a little bit more prepared with some work gloves and you know car hard jacket and stuff like that but right yeah yeah that was uh definitely I was definitely put on the back foot there for a little bit, but uh, we pivoted and made made good of it. We got a yeah. lot of good, foot, good footage. It was cool too, yeah, because we got some amazing footage of actual day to day life. This is this is what happens on a working working farm, working ranch. So, yeah, we got so much footage footage from that fence build too. I'm still going through all of the different shots and angles and everything. Uh, it was really cool too, just. Uh, doing it all and then seeing at the end like look at what we did <laughs> like right. you look at that this isn't just like some little fence like adam was saying this is some big huge panels and um yeah to be able to do it i've worked so many years on a computer where you're typing or you're building a website or something but to work with your hands and then see the finished product at the end is pretty darn rewarding so hey i got an answer from maggie on this one uh this question here beef cows do they need company or can you keep just one uh, Maggie said, you can uh, keep just one if you want to just raise your own beef. Uh, if you can uh, get a cow and a calf, uh, then buy a cow and have her artificially inseminated or buy a pregnant cow and raise her calf. Then have her rebred, but learn how to take care of a smaller animal first. Start with sheep, goats, Ooh. pigs. Learn by degrees and you should upgrade. That's great advice. Great I advice. I love that. Yeah. I love that. My my next one I was thinking for our homestead was a pig because we've done chickens and we've done goats. Uh, the other advice should be don't ever do goats. <laughs> don't <laughs> you wanted do, more. Don't ever do boy goats. <laughs> don't ever do boy goats. Um, that should be common <laughs> sense though. So awesome. Thank you, Maggie, for that one. Uh, if you get a chance, Maggie, the other question was, uh, what is your favorite breed of cattle? And then we have this one, Maggie. I asked you this one when we're there. We get the, I've gotten this question from Maggie a couple times. Uh, Maggie, my biggest question, as a 65-year young woman, do you use a skincare product, and what is it you use? So I'll leave that one to Maggie. A lot of people asking that. Another question, Maggie, I've been getting. Uh, I, my sister was asking. Uh, she saw some photos. She's like, How, what's your hair care routine? Because, again, most... Most folks in their 80s are losing hair or have gray hair, and you have mm -hmm. like just normal <laughs> blonde right. hair, for lack of a better way to put it. It's it's kind of remarkable. So mm -hmm. that was another comment I've seen from a few people is, is there any skincare, hair care, I guess, uh, products or routine that you're using? Yep. 
Wow, got a yeah, lot of questions yeah. in here. Maggie, I'm going to just keep posting questions and whatever you can answer, we get and whatever you can't get to, don't worry about it because there's a lot of them in here. There's so 300 people on here right now. Uh, what, what was well, the here we go. This is a good you, one. Gary. Go ahead. Does Maggie sell t shirts with her ranch <laughs> on Amazon? Adam, you want to take that one? Uh, I don't believe that they sell them on Amazon right now, but uh, I was just talking today with, with Maggie and Mac about. Um, getting t-shirt designs up and getting it on, on their uh, spread shop and getting that up and rolling. So you can, you can be, you can know that I'll be the first one buying a shirt. So <laughs> before everybody else and I'm going to shout it from the rooftops on how to, how to get the merch as soon as it's ready for sure. Yes. Another great way to support them too. So the shirts are coming very soon. Uh, but to stay on top of all of that, just Go over and follow them on Instagram. That's their main thing right now. And they're posting yeah. to it regularly. And it's awesome. The content they're putting out on there, you're going to thank me. Um, and then I'm sure once they have a shirt, you'll see one of those on Instagram. And uh, great, great way to support them. Mm -hmm. All those links are in the description. Maggie answered my previous question. Uh, let's see. That was, what is Maggie's favorite breed of beef cattle? Maggie said, I don't have a favorite breed of cows. They're all amazing animals. That's one thing Adam and I learned. Children and cows. Maggie loves children and cows. Very Aww. passionate about both yeah. of them. Our Alberta cows are Simonental Angus crosses. I might have butchered that one. I'm sorry. And we <laughs> raise bulls for other ranchers that fit our climate and are long and brutal winters. We have to provide shelter and bedding and feed appropriate for the climate. Uh, Maggie mentioned this earlier, too. They're also just recently there. They have a ranch in Colombia. Um, so at the ranch in Colombia, these cattle would not do as well with the heat. So it depends on your climate and your heat. Speaking of their ranch in Colombia, what a amazing adventure they're going to be going on there. Um, so they're 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 in Canada right now, but they're going to be in Colombia at this this other ranch uh, soon. Another reason to follow them because I'm like that's like season two of the Maggie the Maggie show. <laughs> we get to see the the Colombia warmer version. So. Uh, mm -hmm. So that was her, that was her answer. She doesn't have a favorite breed of cows. They're all amazing, and uh, you really want to pay attention to your climate and what works best for you in your area. So, so Maggie, the other question in the meantime that you're probably typing up was, do you have a skincare or hair care routine? Another question after that, uh, I think Adam and I can answer. Do you have the egg recipe that Maggie made? We had all sorts of eggs. I don't think there really is a recipe. I think we had scrambled eggs the first day. Yeah. We yep. had fried eggs another day. Yep. Um, so, yeah, nothing. You don't really need a lot of recipes when you're on carnivore, right? Just no. make an egg and eat it. <laughs> right. those places, well, we, we had salt, so it was eggs and yes. salt. Everybody had their own salt shaker. Yeah, they, now you know you're in a true carnivore's house if everybody has their own salt shaker. Right. I love that. <laughs> Jennifer, Texas Carnivore suggested Maggie needs to sell beef jerky. Would be cool if sugar-free and no plant additives. Yeah, that'd be cool. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of beef jerky and other food, uh, man, we had some treats throughout the week. We just keep talking about breakfast, but at one point, uh, Max smoked up some ribs. Oh, yeah. uh, at another point, we had chicken. At another point, uh, one of my favorite meals outside of breakfast, uh, we had deer. We had venison. Yeah, that was that really was fantastic. Good. What did they do? You remember, Adam? It was like slow cooked or something. Yeah, I can't remember for how long it was. It was hours and it was hours and time, hours yeah. at a low temperature in the oven. It was fantastic. Oh, it was so good. The I have that, that I've normally before. had has been gamey, you know, and just not very good. And uh, yeah, that was the first time I've ever had deer that was just oh man, it was it was delicious. I want it again. Yeah. So that was your first time. I had it. I had it once before, but it wasn't the same as that. That was the way they cooked it and prepared it and slow cooked it. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, Maggie, is there a cow that you recommend for Texas heat? Uh, mm -hmm. If eager to start regenerative ranching, future ideas that she has in mind from Jennifer, Texas Carnivore. Uh, someone shout out Laura Spath. She's an awesome YouTuber. She was involved with our 24 hour live stream as well. She did a little recording for us. Uh, Laura Spath just did a video making beef jerky with just smoked salt for seasoning. So that, that mm -hmm. could be a good one for people to check out. Uh, Jennifer said, is Maggie on here? Which one is she in the comments? Well, that's a good question. I'm not sure if Maggie's in the comments or not. Um, but 
I am uh, I'm answering on her behalf, and she's texting to me. But I'll ask her, Maggie. Let me know if you are in the comments, and we'll. we'll Sorry, start that over. was me. <laughs> no, <don't worry. laughs> um, as far as I know, two people have signed up for the uh, the Chicago for oh, Chicago. Oh, nice! At least two people. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Nice. Cool. If you want to sign up, I'll put the link. I'm going to put the link there. So sign up now. Yep. Like I said, we're going to, we have some things lined up, but I have a feeling we're going to announce so-and-so is going to be there and someone else is going to be there. And then it's going to fill up. And when it's done, it's done because yeah. it's a smaller room. And um, yeah, when it fills up, it fills up. We can't fit any more people. There's just nothing we can do about that. So mm -hmm. oh, guess yeah. hey, question here. from Primal Mike. Oh, wait, just oh there she is. Here. Okay. So sorry. I lost your question. <laughs> oh, no, thank you. Alberta Rancher, Maggie and Mac here. So they are in the chat. So, awesome. hey, yeah, Maggie and Mac, feel free if you want to type, if it's quicker, type it in the chat or here on uh, the, the app, whatever works for you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, Primal Mike, our good friend and family from Chicago, hoping to see you out there. He's one of the people. <laughs> how can a fairly young person living in the city help support regenerative farming besides buying animal-based foods from local farms? That's a good question. Uh, Maggie, Mac, if you can answer that one, is there anything else a young person living in the city can do to help support regenerative farming? My only suggestion, and I'll, I'll try to think of more ideas, is um, sh not just buying from a local farm, but shouting them out on social media. Like everyone's on social media, you included, mm -hmm. Mike. So posting on Facebook, shouting them out on Instagram, doing a little YouTube video I think would be huge as well. Um, that's one idea from my side, but Maggie, Mac, if you have any other ideas, please, uh, please let us know. Here, in a similar vein, um, from RV, there yet, uh, single most effective action each of us can contribute to sustaining cattle ranchers. And then we got this one, which I think Maggie's working on right now. Does Maggie use any skincare products? <laughs> I've seen that question asked at least a thousand times. We're gonna we're gonna squash that one today for sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey pa beater thank you sir ten dollar live stream really appreciate it hit 418 today all told it's over 45 pounds down since mid-august great great awesome. job so happy to hear that and happy to hear your comments uh every time you got some more progress it's great to see here we go uh shannon asked I bought some grass-fed beef the other day, and it was too gamey. It was so gamey, she couldn't eat it. Um, I've also had some grass-fed beef that wasn't gamey, tasted better. What is the reasoning for this? Um, Maggie, Mac, if you could answer that. And then I'm going to jump back to the skincare question, because I have an answer for Maggie here. Uh oh, A couple people asked this one. Drum Does roll. Maggie use any skincare products? <laughs> I'm going to repeat this verbatim. <laughs> this is Maggie's words, okay? I got I to gotta translate. Skincare. Laughing my ass off. I just <laughs> don't. In all caps. I shower when I can. When you're my age, friends give you tea and soap for Christmas. Maybe that's a hint. No sun protection. You hear this? Carnivores don't sunburn. I'm going to irritate a lot of people. No sun protection ever. I don't burn even in Colombia. Hair care? Question mark. I have terrible hair. It's frizzy, curly in the rain. I keep it long enough for braids or a ponytail. I don't have time or money to waste on that kind of stuff. She buys all of her clothes at Value Village. We were talking about this there. Value Village is like a Goodwill here or a thrift store here, secondhand store. Um, she buys everything used except for boots and hats. I clean up and I will wear a dress for weddings. And if I absolutely must, sorry, guys, give me 36 hours a day and I'll think about it. <laughs> so hopefully that answers your question. Uh, Maggie does her Maggie's only I'll answer it for her in addition her only skincare products and hair care products are beef salt and water that's the only thing she's putting she's putting in it and it's doing yeah. a heck of a job so yeah. in fact uh, no, nothing else <laughs> yep yeah and I'm I'm gonna tell you right now pictures look great on the internet but when you meet her in person it's almost it's almost like okay. Show me, show me your driver's license. Yes. I want to see your birth certificate. Yes, because it do almost doesn't look real. <laughs> and Maggie's watching this right now, and she's like, "How can that be?" But Maggie, I'm telling you, everyone. There's 328 people on here. If all of them saw you, they'd be like, 
What is she doing? Well, what is she doing? <laughs> she's been eating the proper human diet for over 60 years now. She's been getting outside. She's been exercising. She's been working hard and she's been eating the proper human diet. Imagine going that long without having all this inflammatory food that other people eat their entire lives. Mm -hmm. Right. Your, your sure. skin, your, you feel it in your skin, you feel it in your hair. It affects all parts of your body. So there's the, there's the skincare question. If you see Maggie in person too, Adam, one of the other, well, actually, let me, let, I've got a little anecdote I want to share. I'll, I'll ask another question here. Dennis is asking Maggie in Southern Alberta or West of Calgary, question mark. Someone else said they have a cat named Maggie. Um, <laughs> and then another question, I'll throw a couple at you, Maggie. Some of these are quick ones. Um, I am in NC. I used to live in Calgary. Is Maggie a Flames or Oilers fan? I got a feeling I know this answer, but we'll let Maggie answer it. And then someone asked, how old is Mac? So there's a few questions for Maggie. Uh, one other memorable moment from the trip for me uh, involved my friend Adam and Maggie. Uh, at one point, we went and picked up a bunch of firewood. And yeah. well, there was two memorable <laughs> moments, but one of them was Maggie is just next level all around. Some of the stuff she was telling me and describing, I'm just like, it took me a while to process. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this stuff is amazing. One of the biggest things she said, and this is going to be in the documentary, um, but one of the things she was telling me was we went and looked at this, um, it was a canola oil um, crop Field. and they were, they were processing it and they showed us the seeds from it. But Maggie was saying one, one of the things wrong with growing plants and um, vegetables, which happens all over the world, is so much you, you put so much into that and you grow all of that stuff and you take all of the nutrients and you take all of it off, but nobody is putting it back. Mm -hmm. Nobody's putting it back. The regenerative farming part of it. Um, at Maggie's farm, the cows poop, and that poop has all sorts of valuable minerals and nutrients in it that go back into the soil. You, you guys should see their soil. That was incredible, too. Adam and I both said that when we were digging. Uh, when Mac yeah. was digging for the fence and pulling the soil, it was the richest, most nutritious looking soil I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. But most of the world's soil, including the soil in my own backyard, looks nothing like that. There's no nutrients in it. And for people out there who foolishly think like when the pandemic happened and people start worrying about going off grid and things like that, and they foolishly say, oh, I'll just grow a garden if anything ever happens. I got some seeds. <laughs> You are kidding yourself and you are <laughs> clueless. It can take years to amend that soil and get it to where it needs to be to grow something. And mm -hmm. if you're not putting the nutrients in it, cow poop, how are you going to even do that? So uh, anyways, that was one of Maggie's points. And then later in that day, uh, we, we gathered some firewood. And it was a, the, I got some really cool video of Adam and Maggie unloading the firewood. Yeah, and that was fun. Talk about not seeming like an 82-year-old. Uh, just sort of this playful interaction maggie and adam had unloading the firewood maggie's like make it fun it's work but we make it fun and they were she was tossing these huge logs out these firewood <laughs> logs out onto the wood pile she's like adam you see right there between those two logs i'm gonna land this right there and she went and tossed it and it was like whoo, 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 slow motion and it landed perfectly where she said nailed it and she's, she started <laughs> laughing and clapping and high-fiving adam and it was yeah. like I, I keep using this but it was like they were just teenagers joking around it was it was such a cool moment i, I can't wait to share that with people because that is definitely in the documentary it, it was just a kind of a magical moment and you're looking at it, you're like there's there's no way this person's 82 years old it's just remarkable so yeah there was um, multiple times when we were chucking chucking the logs i noticed you know my my log is like yes. this big around i noticed that too <laughs> and hers is like this i'm like find, find me a big log somewhere <laughs> I got that. Yeah. Uh, do know, Adam, I got that all on video from multiple right. angles. Adam's tossing a little twig over and Maggie's got this huge <laughs> log and she's just <laughs> one after the other. I, I can't talk as I was standing around with a little camera letting you guys do all the work, but right. I, I had to get some of that footage. So, so uh, while Maggie answers that, let's see, we'll go through some more questions here. Oh, um, nourishment redacted Ellie. Um, I think we might have answered this one already. Well, let me see. I'm going to ask Adam. What was your favorite meal you had on the Canada trip? Ooh. Oh, man. Um, I would have to say probably the, the, the venison. I mean, I loved all of it, but it was probably the venison because I was really surprised at how good it tasted. Yeah. And uh, I definitely would like to have that again. 
likewise that was my favorite for sure um the biggest thing is like i learned something i'm taking away something i'm getting i'm going to the butcher i'm getting the beef fat and i'm going to be doing that with every meal because i feel so much better and then the other thing was um i i do ground i don't do ground beef a lot i do patties a lot um emma emma's always making up patties but we had a lot of ground beef for breakfast and it was one of the I don't know what ground beef they're having there, but it was fantastic. I'm like, why don't I do ground beef more? Well, the stuff I was getting wasn't tasting like that. Um, I got to get more from mm. my neighbor. A lot of the ground beef I did early on was store-bought. Uh, but they would do ground beef, and then um, you have the little fat chunks that you could put with it, which was excellent. But mm -hmm. she also had this cold thing of butter on the table. So you take a little piece of the cold butter, mix it in with the ground beef, and take a bite. Oh, it was fantastic. No, yeah. So I'm going to do some more of that. If you guys are like, Carrie, shut up already. I'm purposely also talking <laughs> to give Maggie some time to answer as well. So Maggie is uh, answering these. Here we go. The question about how old is Mac? Maggie said, my beloved Mac just turned 68. So Mac is a little bit younger than Maggie at 68. Uh, Mac was just killing it then too. That first day we worked on the fence. Oh yeah. I'm like, is he just going to keep going? Just keep going, 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 going. <laughs> and the cool thing with Mac is the carnivore brain at work. He had this whole fence project mapped out in his mind. He knew exactly 10-foot panel here, 12-foot panel here. Got to dig down here. Got to do this here. I got this pole that's going to go over here, and this one's going to go over here. He had it all ready to go in his mm -hmm. brain. Um, the thing with Maggie and Mac that was most remarkable and unexpected for me was I'm like, we're going here to film Maggie aging, um, but it, it also turned into sort of this uh, love story between these two. I, I kept saying it throughout the trip. They were like teenagers just uh, – so joyful and happy and excited to be around each other the entire time. So a lot of that was caught for the documentary as well. Some really, really touching, sweet moments for sure. Uh, super sticker. Harley uh -oh. for Mike. Appreciate you so much. Thank you. $10. Awesome. Every penny going to the carnivore diet documentary. Uh, Reflux sucks. Love the name. <laughs> uh, I think we covered that one already. I'm sorry. I'm a little bit behind here, but we, we answered that one. So thank you. PA Beater, $5. I would like to sponsor a person for the meet and greet. How can I do that? Oh, that's so nice of you. So the meet and greet is $50. How could he sponsor a person for the meet and greet? Well, I told them to just fill out the form and let me know his YouTube name in the form so we can donate it. <laughs> nice. There we go. We'll we'll shout it out on one of these live streams or something and go from there. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's a good question. Um, uh, Oh, uh, May Maggie just said the computer shut off, so she's a little behind, but she's catching up now. Uh, May question for Maggie: uh, When you get caught up, what time does Mac and Maggie start their day? How many hours do they work in a day? Uh, all of them, all of the hours. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, uh, I'll allow Maggie to answer that one when she gets a second. And question from the wonderful Alia Wells: Check out her YouTube channel too. Uh oh. Um, did I link to your YouTube channel? Now I got to double check. Oh, if I did, it's okay. I'll just uh, take uh, initiative and put it in the comments. <laughs> okay. Yeah, everyone yeah. check out Alia's channel. She's got an awesome <laughs> channel. Uh, Maggie, I am in Colombia. You want to just ask it? To yeah, I, I live in Colombia. You want any help? Uh, reach out to me. Come and check out my channel. Carrie knows how to reach me. And my husband and I want to buy a cow eventually. Like a mm -hmm. like one to eat, not one to raise. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> we, we, we talked about you, Ali. I, we were talking about you while we were there and we were talking Aww. to Maggie about Columbia. So yeah, Maggie, this is the wonderful Alia Wells we told you about who also has a place in Columbia. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how far you guys are, but I'd love to hook you guys up. Uh, Maggie is on, um, what is this thing called again? The chat. WhatsApp. Thing I have WhatsApp. WhatsApp. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm like an old guy now. My kids use it. <laughs> Maggie used this and she's, she got me onto it and now I'm on it with Alia. So Alia, we can hook you up on there for sure. <laughs> Wait. Adam. Okay, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> How does this work? <laughs> awesome. Uh, someone just said, is there a meetup in Chicago? Just came on. I'm in the suburbs of Chicago. Yes, yep. there will be 11, 11. From five to seven, it even rhymes. 11, 11, two, three, one, 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 two, three in Chicago. And you can visit carnivoredietmovie.com forward slash Chicago to learn more. Shannon Bedard, super sticker, $20. You are awesome. Thank you so much. Every penny, like this whole trip, guys, keep this in mind. This whole trip, Adam and I had to fly out to Canada, um, had to get a rental car, travel expenses, things like that. 
All of this was funded entirely by these donations and super stickers right. and things like that and the 24-hour live stream. So thank you guys thank you so, so much. much. I know I always say it. I sound like a broken record, but I think it's important. None of this money, the $20 doesn't come in and $10 goes in Carrie's pockets to buy him steaks. My steak money, my own money, my personal money, my bills is all from my own work that I do outside of this. So this is all for the carnivore diet documentary. So we really appreciate it. Thank you. Nancy asks, who will take care of the ranch when they go to Columbia? Uh, great question for Maggie and um, Mac. And I'll, I'll, I'll lead into it a little bit because um, that was part of the reason we did that fencing. Uh, so that family that helps them around there, it makes it easier and safer for them to feed the cows. The cows can just come up and stick their heads through this area versus going into the fence and then over the another fence and then taking the feed in there. Mm -hmm. um, so part of it was they're, they're doing some good planning to streamline things in that regard. But I'll let Maggie answer those questions uh, as she gets caught up here question for me, what was your favorite part of the trip? Wow. That's a tough question. Oh, no, it's a good question. Here's my favorite part of the trip. This is going to be a funny one too. This is going to be a little awkward. Adam, you ready for this one? Tim Hortons. Yeah. Yeah. The Tim Hortons <laughs> next, next door to Tim Hortons was the favorite part. You know, um, the very last day, uh, Maggie was rightfully so shy to be on camera, but she was very darn brave to allow us into her house for several days because she knows mm -hmm. how important this was. Um, uh, but she didn't want to have anything to do with being on camera. Who would, who would want to have a camera stuck in their face? And believe me, this camera was stuck in her face for days and days and days. Max face too. Um, so she was very brave, but Adam and I were like, we got to ease into this. So like the first day we did a little bit less and then more and more as we became closer and we became genuinely friends with them. And on the last day, it was the big interview day. Adam and I went into Calgary an hour away and we rented all sorts of equipment that wouldn't fit on the plane, um, lighting equipment and studio equipment. And Adam knocked it out of the park. All credit to Adam for this interview scene. We're like, up until that point, it was like Adam said, we're building fences. We're doing firewood. It's run and gun. I got the camera on the gimbal and I'm literally running around getting shots. Adam's running around taking photos. Uh, it was just running around the whole time. But this last day, it was a big sit down interview uh, we're in a studio setting, like legit studio setting. And uh, that, that was the the most my most favorite part of the trip because everything came together. And even going into that, Adam and I both kind of knew it's like, we already pretty much have everything. All of our expectations were met going into that. This is just icing on the cake. And Maggie and Mac just knocked it out of the park. It, they were so good. I think like leading into it day by day and doing more and more and answering it helped them and it helped us. And it, it, it couldn't have gone any better. And the other thing that was really funny that day was I said this to Maggie and Mac. I was like, this is kind of interesting. The first day you guys were kind of nervous to be in front of camera. The second day, you're getting a little bit more. The third day, we got some just amazing footage. And then I was joking with Adam. I'm like, now on the fifth day, you got to ask Maggie uh, to take off her shirt on camera. <laughs> so, That's an inside joke. <laughs> it's an inside joke. Everyone watching, it, it's, it's clean. She had a tank top on, but I'm like, she's just ripped, like the, the exercise she's doing. And at one point, it's kind of a funny inside joke, but Dr. Chafee did a video where he took his shirt off and he showed his muscles. We're like, well, Maggie, let's see your muscles. And Maggie showed us her muscles. And we're not going to show any of that here. We're not going to show any of that unless Maggie's comfortable with it. If it would, it would be in the documentary. Um, but it was freaking amazing. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> Adam, I looked at yeah. those muscles and I'm like, okay, I got to go work out some more. Yeah. And then I'm like, I, I was embarrassed. Think, I, think <laughs> I, I have no could, excuse. Right. I'm like, I, I think she could literally pick me up and carry me across the, the field, oh, yeah. the pastures with no problem. Absolutely. Just ripped. By and and it just, she's not doing this exercise regimen. Of course, she's doing extremely hard work on the farm, but she's not going to the gym and working biceps and her biceps just were crazy. It's a testament to what she's been doing. She's been working so hard for so long. And feeding, feeding her the body with the, with, yeah, with the proper human diet. Putting the right fuel in, putting the right fuel in the body. It's it's funny too because, um, you know, I did that one video with Dr. Barry where um, I showed him Alex Cannon. I said, look, he's reversed aging. And Dr. Barry said, no, that's what a proper human at 65 should look like if they're eating it. And I believe the same is true for Maggie. A proper 82-year-old that ate the proper foods the whole time instead of all this junk food and sugar and inflammatory foods, that's what they would look like. They would look like Maggie. And they would have muscles and they would have the energy to go all hours of the day working and they wouldn't have any issues doing it. I really believe that's true. Uh, yeah. Dr. Chafee says, like, based on 
telomeres and studies and all this stuff, humans should live to be like 130 years old, 120, 130 years old. I believe most humans would be. I, I believe Maggie's going to have no problem hitting 120 years. Uh, Absolutely. Seriously, I really don't think she will. But I believe most humans would live to 120 if they yep. were eating the proper human diet and putting the fuel in instead of all mm -hmm. this other stuff. So um, her, her as I'm rambling here, I'm just I'm giving Maggie some time to catch up here on some of the questions. Her words were that she she is normal. She's just normal. She's not exceptional. Exceptional. She's mm -hmm. normal. And and the, the, it's the end result of eating the proper human diet. Right. And I believe her. Yep. She kept saying that, too. She's like. It's unbelievable to her. For those of you that don't know Maggie's backstory either, um, here, Maggie, here's another question too as you're loading some up. I really like venison, but what about fat content? Do any of you guys know if it contains enough fat or should it have extra fat added? I'll leave oh, that, that one for you, there. Maggie, as you get caught up here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, just Maggie's backstory real quick. Like, how did she find carnivore? Well, this is an interesting thing. Maggie doesn't have a TV or a radio. She has a radio in her car, but not in the house. She didn't know what carnivore was. Uh, her husband, Mac, another memorable part of the trip, by the way, he showed us a sailboat that he's been working on. Mm -hmm. They're working on sailboats. They're going to be sailing around the world. They're going to Columbia. They're having all of these amazing adventures. You'd never expect an 82-year-old to be doing all this adventuring around the world. Um, but uh, Mac watched it, was watching a lot of YouTube videos about sailing. And then Maggie was like, what is this YouTube thing? What's going on here? And then she started watching some, and then she saw – a Dr. Barry video. And then she saw a Dr. Chafee video. And she was like, this is incredible. There's, this is a thing like carnivore is like a thing. She's like, I just, I've always eaten this way. And the reason Maggie's always eaten this way, this is another question that we've been getting a lot of for, I think it's like 60 plus years. She's eaten this way. She's tried vegetables. She's had broccoli. She's had that stuff before. She didn't like it. And it was out of necessity because when she was younger, she lived out in the bush I don't know, in the middle of nowhere. They didn't have all of the luxuries that we have. You just go to the grocery store and McDonald's. She didn't have any choice. They would hunt their meat and they would eat it. And she found out she really liked meat and she found out she really despised vegetables. Just <laughs> telling us a funny story about broccoli. She's like, yeah, I'll take the broccoli. I'll dip it in butter. And I'll eat the butter. And then basically she's, I'll just <laughs> chuck the piece of broccoli away. It's garbage. Like she doesn't want to have anything to do with the broccoli. She just doesn't <laughs> like it. So she found her way into carnivore and just did it that way because she felt so much better. And it was out of necessity. It was the only food she had to eat. She'd hunt in the bush and she'd get a she'd get a deer or a rabbit and she'd eat the meat. Um, mm -hmm. But then she found Dr. Chafee and then she did that video uh, with Dr. Chafee. And now she's become really good friends with Dr. Chafee. She's talking to him all the time. He just visited her before Adam and I did. We just missed him. It would have been so cool if we could have made that work out um, to meet him. But at some point, I'm going to be meeting uh, – Adam and I are going to be meeting Dr. Chafee for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Hopefully at his house so I can open up and look in that refrigerator and just, ah. Uh... <laughs> I want to see if there's any Vegemite in there. Right. <laughs> Inside of his refrigerator are the things dreams are made of. Dr. Chafee's refrigerator yep. for sure. So, yeah. Uh, let's there's see. Three, 350 people watching right now. And we thank you for spending the time with us. And if you could smash that like button for Maggie, that would really help us out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put her uh, YouTube channel in chat again so everybody can uh, subscribe. Right. Um, Maggie's ranch is like half an hour from me. No way. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. So when you come here, we're going to have a, we're going to have fun. <laughs> that's incredible. You know, I was thinking, um, Alia, because I'm so bad with geography. And when I knew I was going to Canada to visit Maggie, I was talking to Jeff and I'm like, oh, Jeff, I'm going to be in Canada. And he's like, dude, that's like thousands of miles away. <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So with, with Columbia, when Maggie was there and I knew you were there, I was thinking thousands of miles away. You're right next to each other. That's crazy. You're literally right next to each other. I mean, Columbia is like the size of Texas. So wow. Uh, that's but um, As Bill says, Providence. Hours away usually, like from here to Bogota, it's like a half an hour flight. But to get there in a bus, it's 11 hours, <laughs> 7 to 11 hours up the mountain. So it depends. But uh, no, she, she her ranch is literally like a half an hour for me. I might have right. been next to it a couple weeks ago. My friend's coffee ranch, literally. <laughs> it's it's meant to be. It's, it's meant, meant to, to be. be. Awesome. Well, while Maggie's trying to answer those questions, she had to reboot a computer. Um, I have another question for Adam. Uh-oh. If you could go back in time and do this trip all over again, uh, what would you do differently? Ooh, well, the smaller things would be bring some work gloves. 
bring a car heart jacket <laughs> to start with. Um, what would I do differently? Uh, probably bring more gear. Um, definitely, you know, cause I'm, I'm a perfectionist when it comes to lighting and things like that. So there's even, even the stuff that we got was amazing, but I, I feel like, you know, if we had a little bit more of a budget, we could have done a lot more stuff, uh, or if we were able to bring more gear, but we were, we were kind of, uh, iffy on you know what what we should bring so we didn't get flagged at the border and and all that sort of thing either coming in or going out so yeah definitely i think that that would be the case yeah luckily adam came up with a found the rental place i'm so glad we ended up doing that that worked out really well uh for some of some of the bigger stuff we mm -hmm. also took a little field trip that day uh we went to uh this place it's called calgary tower it looks like the space needle that was pretty awesome. Yeah, uh, you, we had to go up super high and look around the window. And I, I'm trying to think. Oh, I don't have any. There's there, you walk out at one point and the 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 floor is glass, but you're hundreds of feet up in the air, mm -hmm. so you can actually step out and walk on the glass. So uh, I think we did. I got a couple of videos on that. I was going to do a little short or something on that when I get caught up. That's one mm -hmm. of the biggest challenges right now is we just have an insane amount of footage. <laughs> Right. And uh, organizing it all, figuring out what can go on YouTube, what can go on the dock. The priority is the dock. So, um, but I do have two YouTube videos queued up um, that are a little behind the scenes stuff that'll be going out soon on the channel. So, all right, let's see what's what do we got. Uh, Maggie's still working on a response, I think. Yeah. I've got I got a picture of that tower if you want. Oh if yeah. Want yeah, maybe sure. let's look at a couple of pictures. People would like to see that, I'm sure. Let's yeah. See. Try to get the right thing here. Well, Adam's getting the pictures up. Uh one other thing that was remarkable about Maggie and kind of sad if you guys know I love movies. I'm in the basement of our movie theater right now. We're playing a haunting in Venice right now. Emma and Katie are up there running the show for me. Um uh, one movie that's just a crazy movie. I, I mentioned this briefly before, but it's called Age of Adeline. And um, mm. it's a good movie. I really liked it. Some people said they didn't like it, but whatever. The, the young girl in there, I don't know. So she gets hit by lightning or something and she stays the same age forever. And then sadly, all of her loved ones or friends and family pass on or her husband passes on. And she keeps staying the same age and everyone around her grows older. And it was really kind of heartbreaking hearing Maggie talk about that experience. Uh, for herself mm -hmm. she had a lot of people um she was saying where, where she went to i think it was her girl's school she was really close friends with all these girls that she went to school <laughs> with when she was younger for decades and decades and sadly all of them many of them passed away in their 60s um, oh, wow. that was 20 25 years ago so she's just been a, kind of alone in terms of just seeing one after the other people pass on including and sadly uh various different family members uh, her mother, uh, at an earlier age than Maggie thought, based on the food she was eating, Maggie said, her brother as well. Um, so that was really, we had one moment where they actually have a little sort of cemetery area on their property that Maggie took us to and showed us. Um, so that's that's in the documentary uh, as well. But it was really it's kind of a sad, touching moment for sure. Found it. All right. Adam's got a picture. Hey, there we go. What a weird perspective. Right. Yeah. So we're on the top of the tower standing on some glass right now. That's Wait, cool. where is that? Calgary Tower. Oh, ah, wow. I yeah. would I would be scared I would break the glass. <laughs> All of yeah, us it was pretty freaky. <laughs> it just felt so down. wrong stepping on that. Like every every ounce in my body was like, don't don't do that. Why are you doing that? Yeah. Hey, we got some. We got a big cool. answer from Maggie. So let's uh -oh. see. All right. Um, I'm trying to remember what question this one was for. Well, I'm sure the answer will be self-sufficient. Let's see here. She said, "Calving season can be brutal depending on the weather, and we are calving out a bunch of first calf heifers. Uh, these new moms need care and supervision and help if they have any trouble calving. Things can go wrong quickly." We do most of our own vet work simply because uh, 60 years ago, I had no phone or power and any vets were 60 miles away. She, she does everything herself. Adam and I were there while they were oh, giving wow. some um, shots to the animals. That yeah. was a heck of a process. Mm -hmm. um, but we have uh, very few large animal vets anymore. 
Shout out to large animal vets. Uh, but someone has to be there when that young cow goes into labor, even if she decides to take off to have her baby in a snowbank. Uh, we work around the clock and sleep when we can in calving time. She was telling us about that. Uh, th th that calving time rules their clock and their schedule for sure. Um, so this was a question about how many hours they work and things like that. Uh, when we start bailing, we just keep going until we're done. Uh, have your pickup with a slip tank for fuel, drink water, and just keep bailing. Over 30 hours is not a stretch. She's not joking. Mm -hmm. She told us that. She will sometimes work 30 hours straight without resting. It's just incredible. Um, all farmers work around the clock at harvest time. We don't get any promises when it comes to the weather. The rest of the year, we just do what needs to be done, and we love what we do. Yeah, all of that aside, all the crazy hours and everything, they they genuinely, truly love what she does. Um, you know, I, I get bored with like our goats and feeding them and the girls do a lot of chores like that. Maggie loves going out and hanging out with the cows. That's her, that's her happy place. Uh, she was so excited to take us out there and film with the cows. Uh, Adam got just a, we got to show that picture, Adam. I don't know if you have that one handy. Which one? The picture of me uh, filming the cow with like super close with the gimbal on. Oh, this is my favorite picture Adam took. It's going to uh, take it, a minute to find it. Sure. I think you have it on your uh, carnivore today. Oh, no, maybe I do. Instagram. Um, I'll see if I can find it quick. Yeah. Adam you took a picture of me, faster. and it, it encapsulates the meaning of my life, everything I'm about. <laughs> In one picture, I'm like, it's such a cool picture, too. Uh, I didn't even know. Let me see. Did I put? No, I didn't put it on that one. Um, we'll find it. Well, Maggie, uh, I think we had another question I sent Maggie. Yeah, keep talking. I'll find it. Okay. Uh, the other question, Maggie, was who will take care of your ranch when you go to Columbia? Um, and then another question was, what kind of deer did we have? Was it blacktail, whitetail, or mule deer? And then another question on the deer was, uh, is there a decent fat content in the in the deer? Um, do you know if it contains enough fat, or should we ha add extra fat through butter or tallow or something? So those were some questions while Adam goes out and checks for that photo. Wow, we got 353 people this on here. This is awesome. So for everyone new, while Adam grabs that photo, we've got Maggie on the line right here. And if you have any questions for Maggie, we're asking Maggie and she's answering. Um, she's typing right now. So, And we also announced earlier, because I know a whole bunch of new people jumped on in the meantime, on 11-11, November 11th in Chicago from 5 to 7 p.m., we're doing a meetup. With Dr. Hampton, I will be there. Emma's probably going to be there. Uh, there's probably going to be um, some other people there, but Alia and Adam from Carnivore Today will be there as well. It's $50. It's all, every penny goes to support the Carnivore Diet documentary. We're going to be having our camera equipment there, so we may film some things for the documentary or YouTube uh, during that time as well. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun. And you can sign up at carnivoredietmovie.com forward slash Chicago. And the other thing I wanted to mention real quick, shout out to my friend, Johnny F. We sold these during the 24-hour live stream. These are so cool. This is my favorite water bottle. I have another one at home. It's got my name engraved on the side of it. This one says Alaska Carnivores, but he's got other ones that say um, Compassionate Carnivore. He's got smaller ones, bigger ones. You can have your YouTube channel put on the side. You can have your name put on the side. These are for sale at CarnivoreDietMovie.com. And the last thing I'll shout out is our little Redmond's salt shakers. I don't have mine handy, but it's a portable travel size Redmond's. People are going nuts for these things. Crazy. When I was gone in Canada, Jen was busy getting all the shipments and sending them out. So we're all caught up there. But if you want one of those, they are still available. CarnivoreDietMovie.com. You can purchase them uh, right there. So I found it. Adam found it. All right, let's see. I got. I want to show you one of the my favorite photograph, literally of all time. It's pretty egotistical because I'm in it, but Adam <laughs> Adam took the photo. And it's such a cool picture. There it is. Yeah. That's that's me summed up. Cow, a cow, a camera. I love that. I I was joking with Adam, but I I got a similar. Sh I was. I was doing like a 360 around the cow, so Adam caught it right at this perfect time, but. Uh, I did that with my neighbor's cow and he stuck his tongue out. And I was like, wouldn't that have been cool if that cow was sticking his tongue out at the lens during that that's, shot? That's what I was saying in my brain. 
right. Stick your, lick, lick the lens, lick the lick lens. The lens. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. That, that thing is, so that's their Netflix approved camera. Now I know it looks smaller in that shot, but um, it is rigged out under normal use, but we tried to go minimal run and gun because we knew we'd be running around a lot and we didn't want to pack so much stuff on the plane. When I shot Bill though, that looked more like a regular movie camera with a big cage around it and all the audio stuff hooked up to it. But this was the minimalist version. I'm so glad we did that because I literally had that thing in my right hand the, like every day. Um, so it was it was uh, a lot. Yeah. We got we, it, we got so much footage. I'm so excited a, that, with the footage we got. That's a powerhouse of a camera. Just so people know, there's a movie that's in theaters right now that the entire movie was shot on these cameras. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. the movie's called The Creator. Um, we're oh, actually, I love that movie. Did you I see loved it? it? Yeah, it was awesome. I saw it last week. Yeah, I loved the, it. <laughs> the um the the visuals like the cinematography in that movie was fantastic it's it it's gonna win some awards for sure but i was so surprised when i heard that it was filmed with it, it, it's not like they use a couple of these cameras that whole movie was filmed with the fx3 camera a suite of fx3 cameras which is the same camera that you just saw there in that picture um so we're using the same camera that was used on this feature film that's getting all sorts of recognition so that's kind of cool um, totally random question. Did you guys in your theater show uh, Taylor Swift? <laughs> no, we didn't. No. <laughs> it was awesome. Was it? It was fantastic. <laughs> That's cool. uh, my five-year-old just asked me to take take her to see it again, and it's not in the theaters anymore here. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think it was like a limited thing, so we couldn't get it here. Otherwise, we probably would have. You would have filled up your entire theater. Right. <laughs> 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 I'm looking to I'm looking forward to filming up the entire theater when we play the Carnivore Diet movie because it's going to premiere here. That's going to be pretty cool. I will be there. I'll fly there. Um, yeah. Can you ask Jen to come to Chicago? <laughs> I did, and I really wanted her to. She can't because someone has to run the theater. It's Saturday night. Oh, There's true. like no one else to run the theater, unfortunately. She was really oh, close to going to Canada, too, but she doesn't have her passport. Um which is a her problem. She's, she's, she's absolutely <laughs> terrified of flying, but she's going to actually be flying in December for the first time in, I don't even know, 15 years. Like uh, we used to go down to Florida and we drive like 30 hours because she didn't want to fly two hours. And I'm like, I'm not doing that anymore. So, so unfortunately not, she's not coming, but Emma might come because then Jen and then two of the girls can stay back and run the theater. So. Oh, okay. I understand. Next time. Next yeah. Time next time or she can come and i'll stay back and run the theater there you go <laughs> i don't know if she'd right. like that too much she doesn't like being the center of attention all right let's see if maggie answered yet uh she's still working on the answer for the last one so if you guys have any other questions for uh me or adam too we can take those as well mm -hmm. oh here we go question from nancy carrie will you visit maggie and alia in columbia um, I don't want to commit to anything, but I would absolutely love to. Since uh, we know she's so close. I'm so close to her. Yeah. And it would just be amazing <laughs> filming her there too. But, uh, and I speak Spanish. But given unlimited, uh, carnivore Spanish. diet budget, I would say yes in a heartbeat. You know, that's mm -hmm. my only, that's my only right. reason for hesitating is just, we have a limited budget that we're allocating to, uh, the big part of the, all the remaining budget that we have is filming all of these doctors at each of their locations, like Dr. Chafee, who happens to live all the way out in Australia. <laughs> it's going to be an expensive uh, trip for sure. And filming Dr. Barry and Dr. Baker and all these guys is going to be a big cost. So given the budget, I would go there in a heartbeat. I'd love to see Maggie's Ranch. I'd love to meet Ali and the, and the family down in Columbia for sure. Um, you know, I can find you cheap flights. Uh, round trip, 600 bucks for the three of us, but you guys have all that film equipment. So it might be a little more expensive. Yeah. That's where it, right. that's where it adds up. Yeah. We found a cheap flight the other day, Jen and I did. And, but then by the time you add it on, like just a suitcase, the price like quadruples, they, they're really <laughs> smart on that market. Yeah. It's true. It's almost, it's almost the same price for the suitcase as it is for a seat. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's like crazy. $70 flight. And then you add a suitcase on and then it puts all the taxes and everything else. And you're at like $400. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Uh, question from Twin Maple. GoFundMe, guys, pay the GoFundMe. 
pay for Carrie and Adam to come <laughs> see me. Yes. Let's go. Put, put a little special. Columbia will budget it out and say, anyone want to cover that? Yeah, I would yeah. go in a, I'd go in a heartbeat. I got my passport too. Uh, I like warm weather as well. I'm such a baby now that I'm a, I should be tougher as a carnivore, but I get cold so easy now that I lost my, my fat suit. I was scared going to, going to Canada. I thought it was going to be freezing there, but I, I don't know. I think we got very fortunate, Adam. The weather was fantastic all yeah. week. Yeah. I, I get cold too, but I don't think I get as cold as Carrie because he was, he was cooking me out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> it's true I'm nor I normally don't do that either but I don't know <laughs> I uh question from twin maples carnivore homestead any predator issues that's a great question bears wolves cougars it was really cool there are a lot of coyotes that come close to the house um that mm -hmm. we're here in yelping and uh, Maggie after we left she said there was one right next to our cabin um but question for Maggie when you get a chance any predator issues bears wolves or cougars Nancy Chandler, question for Adam. Photographer's dream, question mark. Hmm. Probably Carrie. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> nice. No, uh, photographer's dream. Uh, I'm not sure what you're referring to, but. Uh, like, what's your favorite thing you want to film or shoot? Well, right now, this documentary, uh, this, is, this is absolutely a dream come true. Um, I've photographed a lot of things in, in my life, uh, you know, even presidents, and none of that stuff compares to this mission for this documentary at all. It doesn't even hold a candle to it. It's awesome. Good answer. What What's the craziest thing you filmed, though, so far, or photographed so far? You, you said presidents. The craziest thing? Yeah, it's probably uh, an Indy car at the Indy Grand Prix in Indianapolis. Uh, the car come barreling through the, the sand pit and uh, was coming directly at me uh, at the wall. And it threw up sand and dirt and everything flying everywhere. And I got a really incredible shot of that. Luckily, he stopped just when he hit the tires. Right. It was literally like three feet in front of me. Uh, wow. That's probably one of the most incredible things that's ever happened for sure. Now, did you just stand there, click, 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 or did you start oh, yeah. running? It was too late to run. <laughs> You're like, might, <laughs> might as well. Go too fast. <laughs> might as well go out. Yep. Go out in glory. Yep. Guns get the are shot. firing. Get the shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine you don't get the shot and you got hit anyways. <laughs> right. <laughs> How unfortunate would that be? Yep. A uh, question for Maggie. Maggie, do you have any cavities? I'm wondering how your dental health is. Another question for Maggie. Uh, Maggie, do you ever use volunteers on your ranch for short, for short term, like a week or two? Um, so I'll give Maggie some time to answer. And Adam's got a little bit on that one. Uh, Carrie and I both did. For oh, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, <laughs> Adam and I we both volunteered. Did. Yes. And they're, they're actually doing that. They have several families coming. So in the description below, I have their um, fundraiser that Dr. Chafee set up. And what Dr. Chafee did was... He donated a thousand dollars and he came for like a week and um, he volunteered to help too. He was helping do all sorts of projects. Him and L, his girlfriend mm -hmm. L, um, did all sorts of work. And then um, they opened it up and they said, Hey, listen, if anyone wants to come stay on the ranch and they want to work for like a week, um, any donations they get for a thousand dollars, they will host them. Now, it's not just, Oh, I got to pay and then got to go work. No, you can come hang out in the ranch. You don't have to work. But if you want to get your hands dirty and you want to work on things, um, that is an option they have offered. Uh, so that is that link for the fundraiser is below. Uh, but outside of that, I'm sure they'd maybe be open to it. I'll leave that question open for, for Maggie. Uh, let's see if she's answered here. Oh, we got an answer from Maggie. Oh, this is a good one. Okay, so um, I want to make sure I didn't miss anything here. Okay, here we go. Maggie said... Uh, this might have been an answer to a couple questions too, by the way. I, I'm sorry. I keep throwing, I throw like three at Maggie at a time, but here we go. Maggie said, when I was a kid, my dad always said that as farmers, we are responsible for feeding the other half of the population. That was when 50% of Canadians were farmers. That's all in all caps, by the way. That was when 50% of Canadians were farmers. Now we are responsible for feeding 98% of our people. Farmers know this. It weighs heavy on us. And now the world thinks we are wrecking the planet. The world thinks she's wrecking the planet. So backwards. 
The mm-hmm. ranchers and cowboys are being vilified and called cruel and inhumane, and they don't understand just how essential the animals are to the health of the soil. The Great Plains and the ranges. 10 million bison are gone from Canada uh, alone, and cattle are the same species. They can and are being interbred as beefalo and our very hardy brief of bovine. We can't bring the buffalo back, but if we don't maintain our beef herd, we won't keep our land healthy. She's very serious on this point, as as she should be. It's such an important point. All these people talking about just eating vegetables. How are you even going to do that? You take the vegetables out of the soil, you leave nothing left there. Mm -hmm. Um, I just want to repeat that last one. If we don't maintain our beef herd, we won't keep our land healthy. It's the absolute truth. Absolutely. Give me a couple of hours and I could prove this to doubters. People don't know the truth of this, but we can't keep chemical farming. And the fact is that people are carnivores. I'm not saying this well, not enough time. You said it very well, Maggie. She, she would like to explain it more. Maggie, that would be a great YouTube video too. Mm-hmm. Remember, longer form video, hold your camera like this, hit the record button and speak your truth. Put that out on YouTube, Maggie. I will shout it out. I will promote it if you want to explain it more. But I, I think you did a good job explaining it. Um, we can't keep chemical farming. We're taking everything out of the soil. And we're not putting anything back in it. And if you look at the soil around the world right now, my neighbor was telling me this too. It's arid. It's almost like the dust bowl in many places right now because people are just pouring chemicals on it, trying to grow something out of it. And there's no regenerative farming and they're not putting any of those nutrients back. And even when they are able to grow something, Humans are not getting the nutrients they used to out of the soil because the poop from the cows isn't going on there with all of those essential nutrients that we need. They're not going back into the soil. So, Right. Uh, I want to say something. There's cows please. right in back of me, and this grass is crazy. Sometimes it's like as tall as I am. I've never seen grass <laughs> before like this. And there's just a couple of cows, and they're just like eating and then... The guys move them around to the other parts, and I'm like, oh, I want to do this. But the grass is crazy. So anyway, awesome. there you go. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I got a comment on that too. Uh, first, Carrie, check your text messages. Secondly, uh, with the um, – uh, where Maggie was saying, you know, that the, the cows put back into the soil 80% of everything that that, uh, that they've taken. Um, so there's also a gentleman that restores – desert areas and he uses cattle to do this so if cattle can be used to regenerate a desert uh then it's Mm -hmm. uh then you can come to the conclusion that uh they also sustain uh a land as well so yeah most definitely that's 100 percent true what she's saying so important too uh here we go uh maggie one more question and i'm gonna i got another answer from maggie uh what shots do the cows get Great question. Um, I, I get this question all the time. What about mRNA and all this stuff going into cows? I'll let Maggie answer this one. What shots do the cows get? They're very important. Uh, Adam and I witnessed that as quite an operation. Very impressive. Mm-hmm. And then um, where did the other question go ahead here? Oh, here we go. Uh, question, does Maggie have any cavities? I'm wondering how her dental health is. Maggie answered this. Um, I went to the dentist a couple of years ago so that Mac would go. Her husband, Mac, would go with her. <laughs> um, the dentist, who's a friend, reminded me that she hadn't seen him in nine years. She went <laughs> then because I hit my front tooth on the cattle squeeze and it was loose and chipped. So she went nine years ago because she chipped a tooth, not because of cavities. He fixed the chip and the tooth actually filmed up, firmed up in about a week. So... Uh, nice. Negative on the dentist and the cavities. She only went in for a chipped tooth and... I don't know how Maggie would possibly have people don't think about this, but you get cavities from sugar, right? Like if you're just eating mm-hmm. meat, you're not going to get cavities. So um, am I wrong on that, Adam? Am I missing some science on that? I don't, I don't that, think that's as far as I know. Well, yeah. I mean, not, not just sugar um, carbs that turn to sugar, so bread and, you know, starches and things like that. So, right. Yeah. I've heard so many people report improved teeth health on carnivore Dr. Jordan Peterson being the big one, when he went on Joe Rogan, he said that he had um, uh, gum disease his entire life, and it's completely gone on carnivore. His entire life he's had it. Uh, Maggie, one of the other questions was, uh, do you ever use volunteers on your ranch for short term, like a week or two? Is that Emma? Emma's here. 
Hey, Emma. Hey, Emma. Emma, say hi. Hey. Um, Emma, I sent <laughs> Lady a picture, and she said that you're beautiful, and she looks forward to meeting you someday. Aww. And Emma, you got to come to Chicago so you can meet my kids, and I can meet you. <laughs> Are you coming to Chicago? Let's put her on the spot right now. 11-11, <laughs> it's a Saturday. Are you coming to Chicago or not? She said, yeah. Nice. You just, you nice. Just you meet up with Ooh. us at the Lincoln Park Zoo. People heard you. <laughs> meet up with us at the Lincoln Park Zoo, and then we'll meet up with your dad later. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a fun day. I, you're going to have people that want to come and talk to you. You're going to want to talk to Emma, right? I get so many comments because there's adults that have teenagers Emma's age, and they want to know what is Emma doing, what works for Emma, so I can teach my teenagers. So um, that'll be a lot of fun. It's from 5 to 7, 11, 11. It rhymes. Yeah. Yeah, don't forget your sharpie. The people are going to want your autograph. Get your auto, get your autograph hand ready. <laughs> awesome. So we're we wrapping things up up there. Yeah. Oh, nice. All right, we're we're finishing up with the movie, so we got a little more time left. Just, I'm going to see if Maggie answers these last questions, but we're going to have to wrap it up here soon. It's almost uh, wow, hour and thirty five minutes already. We have like sixty questions. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness! Did I miss a bunch? This. Or that did I, did I miss a bunch? Yeah. bunch. So you, you're, you're yep. going through that, but <laughs> I've started 60 questions. Hey, we're going to have to do more of these videos for sure. You guys got to check out Maggie too, because she doesn't have the YouTube videos up yet, but she's going to be doing her own channel. Um, but uh, Maggie and Mac, I know you're typing away right now answering these. If you ever want to do one of these and come on, just trust me, it'll be a lot of fun. We'll have Adam here. Alia might join us too. It's It's no pressure. It's just fun. So yeah. people ask the questions and you can just talk. And if you only got an hour and you got to head out and feed the cows or something, we'll, 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 we'll you, you'll, you'll like it. You'll have a yep. lot of fun. Yep. Um, so we have uh, five tickets sold oh, what? Nice. so far for Chicago. Already. Nice. Yep. Let's go guys. We want you in Chicago. Yep. Question for Emma. How was it when dad was gone for many days? Can someone say that? No, I'm asking you. <laughs> um i had to cook for myself you gotta talk into here i had to cook for myself so that was interesting but <laughs> adam and i were talking about that when we were gone how you're always like oh it's so easy being carnivore i'm like yeah if i cook all the meals for you i'd be easy for me too it was easy for me last week when maggie was cooking for me it was so nice that's what you get all the time basically right yeah i'm like come on you got to start cooking more yourself she does cook herself she cooks a lot of burger patties and stuff like that bacon cook some good bacon eggs Good eggs nice. too. Emma's been really busy. She hasn't been at the movie theater. This is the first time, right? Yeah. She has another job. Uh, she's a trader, uh, but she's there, you're closed <laughs> down. Uh, like a, like, does that like a day day trader or what? That's what I was thinking. <laughs> wow, she's doing trading. That's amazing. No. <laughs> Stock trader. Yeah. She's, she's she's betrayed the family in the movie theater. She's uh -oh. moved on to bigger and better things. She's in the ice cream business now. Ah, very oh, cool. wow. You see, Seasonal. Carnivore ice cream. Yeah. She, she like, works with her friend at an ice cream place, but they're, they're nice. done now for, right? Yeah, closed in the summer. They're closed in the summer. So now she's she come crawling back here for another job. <laughs> <laughs> Emma and I might be doing a live stream tomorrow. I haven't announced that one yet. Are we, are we on for that? Yeah. We'll have you to see. just it. announced it. Just announced. Awesome. <laughs> well, let's see if Maggie answered this. Maggie's out here answering uh, questions for people uh, about the carnivore. Carnivore diet and cows and farming. What was that uh, URL again, Alia, for the for Chicago the, meetup? Yep, I'll just toss it in there. I'm tossing it in there. Sign up, everybody. We want to get limited seats, limited standing positions. Are there seats? <laughs> Are we going to have seats sure. in Sure, the... <laughs> yeah, Indian, Indian style. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, there's seats. So that was car uh, carnivoredietmovie.com forward slash Chicago. Uh, it's in the, it's in uh, all the chats. Rock and roll. All right. Maybe one more question for Maggie and then we're going to have to wrap it up here. Uh, what kind of soap products does Maggie use, if any? And I think Maggie's still maybe answering uh, the last question. And did I miss any super chats that we want to read, Adam? Uh, I haven't I even we got them all. Uh, you got a new member. Uh oh, awesome. I'll Thank you, Crystal Firestone, becoming a member. Hey, huge shout out to all the members. Every penny from that goes to the documentary. I know I say this a lot, but oh, crap, I forgot to do it today. Oh, my goodness. We do a members only live stream once a week. It's every Thursday at 3 p.m. 
Uh, this week it was going to be Friday at 3 p.m., but I'm an idiot and I completely forgot to do it. Uh, but every other week there's a members only live stream. Maybe I'll do that in a little makeup one tomorrow. Well, we're kind of doing one here anyways, but this is members only. And I also am doing members only videos and members only behind the scenes photos and um, things like that. So if you're a member, it's only like three bucks a month for the smaller one. You get access to all of those things. And we really appreciate all of you because it's really helping with the carnivore diet documentary to have those those members for sure. Uh, okay, Maggie answered this one. Let's see. Someone was asking about the shots. And she said this. This is a good clarification. I mentioned MRNA before because I get this comment all the time. What about MRNA and meat? What about MRNA and meat? This is what Maggie said. She's the expert on this. I have no idea about any of this myself. There are no MRNA vaccines for cattle, exclamation point. We are hopeful that someday they will develop a vaccine for foot and mouth disease. And they have tried MRNA, but it was not successful. We vaccinate for tetanus, tetanus shots. Everyone knows about that, right? Um, that's what she was doing when we were there. They were giving tetanus shots to the um, to the cows. Uh, we vaccinate for tetanus and other like disease called clostridius. Can you say that, Emma? <laughs> Just say I nailed it. <laughs> nailed it. She said I nailed it. I, I messed that one up. Also, for some viral diseases, these vaccines have been around about as long as tetanus. Diphtheria, typhoid, and longer than polio. Um, I lost friends to polio. Uh, the Salk vaccine was a miracle and saved all the generations since mine. So that's a great answer from Maggie. Maggie, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to have to wrap this up here. I know we got a lot more questions. Maggie, there's 350 people on here. You have so many fans. <laughs> Huge shout out to Maggie and Mac. Uh, check it out. I left a link in the description for their Instagram page, for their website, and for their uh, fundraiser that Dr. Chafee set up. Go check out all of those things. Give her some love and support. Uh, if you guys support Maggie, I'm sure she's going to want to do more YouTube videos, and we would all love to see that because she's she's got some amazing stories and wisdom to share with the world. Uh, and we got a super sticker for $20 from Shannon. So oh, thank, thank you so you. much for that. Huge shout out to Alia Wells. Check out her YouTube channel and Adam from Carnivore today. Uh, go subscribe to his channel as well. Amazing, amazing work, Adam. I'm so proud of the work we did out there. It was it was a lot of hard work, but man, it's it's Yeah, you got some killer stuff, man. <laughs> you 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 too. You too. It was you'll, uh you'll your prize stuff. It was a partnership for sure. And and shout out to Maggie and Mac too, because they were amazing hosts and did a heck of a job sharing sharing their stories and sharing their their farm with us so i think we'll leave it at that and wrap it up thank you guys all so much and have a great night bye everybody bye Beep.